Hi there, and welcome to this video, which is an in-depth analysis of the scene we see here, Caitlin's shower scene, a favorite of mine from Arcane. I have never made a video like this before. I'm quite new to the whole YouTube scene, so bear with me if my editing skills are crude and if I am a little long-winded. Oh, and just to let you know, this video contains spoilers aplenty. First off, I have to tell you that I absolutely love Arcane. I honestly think that it is one of the best shows I've seen, ever. There are many reasons for this, which I could talk about at length, but I will spare you from that. Overall, what I like is the sheer depth of the show. And no matter how much you dig, there's always a deeper meaning, something more turning up, some brilliant parallel, foreshadowing, or cleverly hidden clue that you notice or put together when watching it for the second, third and... Yes, I admit it, the fourth time. There are many scenes in the show which are absolutely amazing, such as the Echo and Jinx fight on the bridge. But the shower scene with Caitlin has engrossed me from the start, and I feel it has been overlooked a little, even in the light of all the fuss that the violin Kate Vi relationship has caused. And yes, I admit freely that I've been completely hung up on them too. And on that note, the obvious reason why I like this scene is because I'm really rooting for Caitlin and Vi. Their budding relationship was my spark of hope in this heart-wrenching show. This scene reveals a lot about the dynamics of that relationship, as well as showing Caitlin's character development in general. And like the rest of the show, there's lots of hidden meaning in it. So let's get into it, shall we? When the scene starts, the music that has started in the previous scene dramatically builds as we see Caitlin from above, a high angle shot, which means that we as an audience are looking down at her. The bird's eye view makes her seem small and powerless. She's naked and as such stripped bare and vulnerable. Her posture, however, doesn't seem so powerless or vulnerable. Her arms are firmly planted on the wall above her, fingers spread wide. The muscles on her arms are flexed, almost as if she's pushing against the wall. Or maybe she's trying to hold something back because her head is hanging down as if in defeat or exhaustion. And we only see the back of her head as we zoom in on her, trying to get closer, trying to find out what's going on with her, if indeed she feels defeated. The last time we saw Caitlin in the episode was in the rain scene with Vi, and it ends exactly as this scene starts, with Caitlin seen from above, her head hanging, her hair drenched. The shot in this scene is much closer, but we still can't see what Caitlin is feeling or thinking. We're continuing right where we left off. As we get into the scene, not much is revealed as we close in on Caitlin, but the music is constantly building, the notes going higher each time we come back to her. And when we cut back to the droplets on the marble floor for the second time, we finally get some of the answer to what is happening. Blood is dripping down, mixing with the water, coming from the wound she obtained on the bridge in the previous episode. I will get into the symbolism of blood in a moment, but I want to take us further into the scene first. The music changes to a faster pace when we jump to water dropping backwards in time on darker tiles. And finally, we get to see Caitlin's face, revealing that she's not looking down at the water or at her bleeding leg. But instead, she's keeping her eyes shut, clenching her lips in a tight line as if to avoid facing something. This is not the look of a defeated woman crying and bleeding. But there is definitely an emotional struggle going on, which is soon revealed when she exhales audibly and opens her eyes. She is unable to hold back the images that now unfold in reverse, Vi walking away from her in the rain. The drops of water on the tiles were reminiscent of the rain, taking Caitlin back to that moment. Caitlin's posture in the shower now makes sense. She's overwhelmed by memories and emotions, and therefore tries to push back, 
to take some control of her emotions, of her life. But she cannot. Her bleeding heart is spilling blood. It will not stop, even if Vi tells her to stop, to forget about her. Even if her parents have tried patching her up, they cannot remove the effect Vi has had on her. The blood spills right through the bandage and onto the floor. Caitlin is reliving this scene with Vi over and over, as if forcing her to return, so that there might be a different outcome from their encounter in the rain. We see the storm of emotions that the memories provoke very clearly in Caitlin as we increasingly zoom in on her face. Her breathing is laboured and her crystal blue eyes are so, so dark. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> back to the point. This is a woman who on one hand is used to getting what she wants. If her parents or her boss say no to something, she finds another way to get what she wants. Like when she became an enforcer, when she disobeys Marx's orders, which apparently she does often, and when she lets Vi out of prison. She is independent and courageous, an excellent shot, always hitting her mark. But this time, with Vi, she doesn't get what she wants. On the other hand, she's also a woman who felt trapped in her old life. Despite the privileged life she has led through her parents' position and the sheltered upbringing, she could not find a place in life that made sense to her. She felt like a misfit. She needed a sense of purpose and belonging, but her parents, Marcus and society in general, constantly tell her what she should do. What are you even doing here, Kiraman? Don't you have a cocktail party to attend? She has finally taken control of her life by partnering with Vi in their quest through the Undercity. Despite being opposites in many ways, she and Vi made sense together. Finally, she has found someone who trusts her and lets her be herself. Someone who is her equal. And now this freedom, this new identity, this new relationship has been wrestled out of her grip. People, including Vi, are still trying to control her life, to tell her what to do or not to do. And these contrasting feelings of desire, regret, pain, anger and powerlessness are obvious throughout this shower scene, but especially here in these dark, dark eyes, in the extreme close-up of her face when she bites her lip. <sighs> that is just so good. <clears throat> it shows her desire for someone else, like she has never experienced before. Regret and pain over how she took a huge risk and put herself out there, voicing the hitherto unsaid, what about us? Despite the fact that Piltover and the Undercity may be oil and water, she's asking Vi for a relationship anyway, and being shot down. And even though Caitlin figures out that Vi is just saying that to protect her in some way, the rejection still hurts. And this leads to anger. Anger against Vi for taking control, for making choices for her and not with her, just like her parents, Marcus and society in general do. And lastly, she feels powerless and frustrated because even though she plays this scene in her head over and over again, she cannot seem to come up with a way to fix things. Hence the futile pushing against the solid wall of emotions that will not go away. You can almost hear her thinking, how could you do this to me? The music underscores and emphasizes these feelings since the ongoing crescendo comes to a climax as we have the extreme close-up of Kate's face. The violin masterfully plays even more emotion into the scene. The track is called Fallout, which I think is very telling. It starts while we see Jace's fallout from his act of war, a boy killed. 
but most of the track and its climax is during the shower scene, so we must assume that the name applies here too. This is the fallout of Vi's rejection. It is the fallout of the struggle between Vi and Jinx, Vi and Silco, between Piltover and Zorn. Caitlin has thrown herself into this conflict and is affected deeply by it. She is in turmoil, and the darkness rising in her is unlike anything we have seen in this intrinsically good character before. The setting further offsets the war that is going on within Caitlin. She is standing in this big, shiny house of hers, a massive bathroom, brightly lit and covered in expensive green marble. The fixtures and handles are grandiose and golden, almost looking like a big shiny house. And the entire bathroom is bigger than the childhood den she and Vi stayed in when Vi was injured. The contrast between Caitlin and Vi has never been more pronounced, and Caitlin feels it acutely, pushing against it, even though this space is a safe place for her. She is naked and alone with her most private thoughts, letting them show on her face, thinking that no one else is there. A <laughs> classic trope of vulnerability, being naked in the shower and then being attacked. But it is not until we see the monkey drawn on the mirror that we understand what the outcome of this scene is, what the fallout really is. As an experienced analyst, I probably should have seen this coming. I mean, being attacked in the shower is a pretty common gimmick. Moreover, there was brilliant foreshadowing in the previously mentioned blood spilling from Caitlin's leg. Who gave her this wound? Jinx. It is from the firelight bogbot explosion on the bridge. The blood spilling is not just a symbol of Caitlin's bleeding heart or the effect Vi and the Undercity have had on her. It also shows how Jinx has had an effect on her. Jinx has blown her up twice now, and is the indirect reason why Vi breaks it off with her. This wound is still open, showing the continued pain Caitlin goes through. But it also foreshadows that Jinx is not done with Caitlin. And since Jinx went under Singe's needles and has been subjected to large amounts of shimmer, her mind has cracked further, shown by the pink colour of her eye. She has fixated on Caitlin as a problem needing to be eradicated. And thus it seems fate has intervened. Jinx's obsession with Caitlin as a threat to her and Vi actually end up bringing Caitlin back into Vi's arms. Definitely not the solution Caitlin, or Jinx for that matter, would have come up with, or even wanted. But it connects the dots that Caitlin has hitherto been unable to connect. Well, connected in a rather bad way, yes, but still connected. Nothing has re been resolved yet between Vi and Caitlin, but they are thrown together again, and there is no denying their connection. And effect they have on each other. And when Caitlin has Jinx at gunpoint, we see a glimmer shimmer, of the aforementioned darkness inside her, as she seriously considers gunning down an unarmed woman, something she never would have considered only a week earlier before meeting Vi. But Caitlin holds back, since the reason to shoot is the same as the reason not to shoot. Her feelings for Vi Caitlin's love and desire to protect Vi. Even though Caitlin suddenly has all the power and control that she was sorely lacking while in the shower, she abstains for Vi's sake. Well, at least to begin with, we actually don't know whether Caitlin would fire or not since Jinx violently takes back control. I love how this show creates such versatile and round characters that you can interpret so much about someone who is essentially a side character. I also love how the characters are all caught up in the show's major themes of duality, aspects and effects of change, 
and who and what you love. There are two tables of power at play at the same time, determining the future. The duality is manifold, but it can be seen in how Caitlin is a pro-zon Pilti at Jinx's table, while Victor is a pro Pilti Zonite at the council table. And both of them have an influence on what is going on through Vi and Jace respectively. But Caitlin is also there to show how people are affected on a deeper level by constant change, contrast and duality. The warring emotions inside Caitlin are mirrored in Vi. Who will Vi side with? Caitlin or Jinx? Powder or Jinx? And it mirrors Jinx's struggle too. Will she side with Vi or Silco? Powder or Jinx? It seems that love is the key. Love is the answer. Because it creates, or potentially creates, change in people and causes the opposites to meet or affect each other. Love creates a darkness in Caitlin, but it makes Vi softer, more trusting. So the two sort of meet in the middle. If Caitlin hadn't loved Vi, if Vi hadn't loved Caitlin, would peace even be on the table? But you could also argue that love is not the answer. It is not the key. Because Silco loves Jinx, which doesn't really help her. Jinx loves Vi and Vi loves Powder, but does she love Jinx too? Would Jinx do all of this if Vi loved Jinx? What if Vi hadn't loved Caitlyn? And lastly, Jinx loves Silco, but she kills him for love of Vi. So in that sense, love is not the bridge. It is not the catalyst. It is not enough to create peace or stability or make opposites meet because it creates change, duality, havoc and all the grey in between. God, I love this show. It is so brilliantly written. And I can't wait to see next season whether the darkness Vi and Jinx has fostered in Caitlyn will darken further if indeed Jinx has just killed Caitlyn's mother. I could go on and on about this, but I think that's enough of me rambling. I hope you have enjoyed the video. I would love to hear your comments or your interpretations of the scene and its fallout. I would also like to give a thank you and a shout out to some of the videos about Arcane which I've watched and been inspired by. You should watch their videos too if you haven't already. Oh, by the way, I just love this little meme by Ryugrass about the scene. So funny. Bye.